Um, I was trying to think of what to talk about tonight, and um, I thought I'd just start with some childhood memories that I had of uh, living in Brussels, Belgium. And yes, we have a native here um, in Brussels. Uh, there were um, everything art, the architecture, the um, textiles, the, um, there was a plaza that people would have their wares spread out, uh, lovely bobbins going and people making little bits of lace and the shops were filled with handmade items, wooden and uh, metal and just all the things that were like toys, but like some things you weren't allowed to touch and some things were very touchable. So for me, the, um, the, it was kind of like overload for a child, but in an exciting way. So, um, so growing up there, uh, my mother had a dressing room, and she hung a, a copy of a painting by John Honoré Fragonard, Young Girl Reading. And as a young girl, I knew reading was very important. So. I threw myself into books and found that you do shift reality in a book and you do, you're here, but you're in another world and you're all the people and you're having the adventures. And it was so exciting for me to find a new place, but still be safe at home with family. Um, but paintings just always interested me as far as color and shapes and uh, I was fascinated by the sheer majesty of how a whole world can be on a flat surface and you feel like you can walk right into it. Um, so hi, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Two children, I love it, um, and a granddaughter and her friend. Uh, very nice of my husband, Don. So um, anyway, paintings were just incredible. So, so I went to an all French school. No English was spoken. It was all French. And I was a little English speaking child. So I had to learn how to communicate. And uh, it was through gestures and pointing to pictures in books and learning what words were. And the teacher would say, you know, this, and that's what it was. And it, it helped me, Libra, a book, a book. <laughs> Everyone knows books. Uh, so I made my way through Europe in books. And uh, so the, the dressing room painting of uh, Young Girl Reading by Jean-Honoré Fragonard uh, inspired me to not only read, but to want to also paint. And when I went to school, one of the things that happened was I had done a little art project. Who knows what that was? But I won a prize. And I was like, I'm an artist. <laughs> <laughs> you know, little kids just know, right? Uh, so that just grew in my heart like a little seedling. Uh, I was hooked, of course, feeling very proud of my gift. And uh, so art lived inside of me. So later, uh, I went to school and did paintings and uh, art projects in uh, art class with uh, a very special lady. And high school, she uh, guided me in art, set up still lifes of uh, stuffed birds and things. And she would say, um, I would say, how, how am I doing? And she would say, make it darker. Make the shadows darker. So that stuck with me. And then later, I went to an art show here in Colorado Springs. Hi, welcome. And um, the uh, art that was on display was incredible watercolors. I couldn't believe watercolors, such a thin medium, could be so incredibly realistic. And a good friend of mine, Sarah Housem, was there, who's a wonderful artist and very uh, well-known galleries. She's amazing, does a lot of uh, 
of um, acrylics and oils. Well, Sarah said, uh, what do you think about this show? And I'm agog, and I said, I want to paint. And she said, well, why aren't you painting? And I said, well, I will someday. And she said, well, someday is now. It's now. And I thought, oh, she's right. So I uh, was introduced to another famous artist named Herman Raymond. And I'm sure you all are familiar with his work. Well, Herman had a studio in Old Colorado City. And I went to this uh, Old Colorado City and hiked up these stairs to the top of the studio. And lo and behold, there was a wonderful group of artists there. And Herman would go around to each person and um, say, uh, do you need any help? And uh, yes, I always needed help. And he'd say, well, what do you want to paint with? And I said, watercolor. I figured if I could get watercolor, maybe I could do other things. So he'd say, fair enough. And he'd sit down next to me and he would say, make it darker. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? I was very light handed. Uh, so I learned to make it darker and it is very important in art. You think it's the light that you want to capture, but it's the dark that makes the light shine through which uh, to me is everything. Uh, so uh, she, uh, Sarah took me to the Garden of the Gods and we had some little easels and we set up and we painted the environ. Oh, I didn't know how you fit the whole Rocky Mountains onto a little bitty you know, paper this bit. And she would show me how to bring it in and how to bring it so that you have a little world right on a piece of paper. Uh, those are some of my favorite paintings, those early paintings with Sarah. They're, they need to be darker, I'm just saying. But I liked the watery, and I liked the way that the colors came out. We were, you know, the Garden of the Gods is such a rich, wonderful place. Uh, we even scooped up a little of the soil and of the red and put it into our water and painted with that. It's remarkable lessons. And then I went to her studio and worked on some uh, collage work with her. So this education was priceless to me, not going to uh, necessarily a college where you learn four years, but uh, I'll tell you what, I, not only did I attract to the medium, of watercolor, but I went to the library, Don will attest to this, and I would bring home stacks of books, stacks and stacks and stacks. The books really encouraged me how to put uh, marks on your page and how to uh, move the water through and how to both make it darker and leave the lights. Um, so watercolor seemed to be my direction. Um, so, uh, when, uh, Donnie and I were in the studio one day painting together, he said, we should have an art show. And I said, oh, okay. And he said, no, I really mean it. And I said, well, okay. But really, I guess I didn't really capture that we would actually do a show, but we did. And Abby came out to the studio and said, oh, yes, we can do this. And uh, she said, uh, how would you like to proceed? So um, I had just started Young Girl Reading myself because I've heard that if you work on a masterpiece <laughs> and try to make it your own, you might get a lesson from a master. So. I uh, didn't want to copy it per se from this size to this size, so I decided to go ahead and blow it up. So um, I blew it up, and then I thought, okay, we need, uh, she needs a pet. Because in the painting, it's really just a young girl with her arm on a, uh, uh, what do you call it, an armchair, and she's 
pushed back onto some pillows and she's reading and, uh, but that's it. And I thought, wow, she needs a pad and she needs a stack of books and she needs more. So that way I made it my own, but, but still learned a big lesson from Jean Honore Fragonard. So, um, when Abby said what direction, I started to think it's books. It's always been books. So, um, I thought, okay, how can I put books into paintings? And uh, so while I was thinking about that, all the books that I was thinking that I had um, read, hi, a lot of them were written back in the 1700s, the late 1700s, like Robinson Crusoe, uh, Shakespeare's uh, Romeo and Juliet. The Grimm's brothers were reading um, uh, Red Riding Hood and all those dark scary stories, but so wonderful for children to be uh, in their home, shifting their reality, and reading something scary, but still getting pleasure out of it. Uh, so um, then I decided that's my collection. What other books are important? I thought the Bible is an important book. So I created a, a painting called The Beginning of the Universe, and it's in the other room. Uh, and it's my interpretation of what I thought that would be from the Bible. Uh, then uh, there was another famous uh, story back then that girls are still reading today. This is Delilah and Zeus. So um, the young girl reading's name is Amelie and Jacques, the dog. And this is Delilah and Zeus for A to Z. Um, yeah, I really thought this out. <laughs> kind of wild what, an, what a story unfolds for each one of us. How do we come to ideas and where, what? It's a whole list of things through your life that you come to create a collection. So this is my collection. I did an, uh, when Abby and I spoke later, she, she realized that the paintings I had created weren't actual books. So I said, well, I'll put together one of books. And I did a little uh, painting in there from Edgar Allan Poe and uh, set up a still life in my house and used Don's family Bible and had the little crooked ribbon in there and uh, stacked up some books uh, from uh, the library in Brussels, Belgium. They're uh, the Three Musketeer books. And I stacked those up and put the candle on it. And then there was another candle that just snuffed itself out right while I was standing there. So I thought, I'm going to try to paint that. And uh, threw that together what, the, two days before the show. And actually, I loved how that turned out, too. So um, that's my story for this collection. Um, the four materials that I love to use is watercolor, soft pastel, oil, and acrylic. And a gal came in the other day to the studio and said, well, have you thought about alcohol inks? And, and have you thought about the wax medium? And I'm like, oh, I can't collect anymore. <laughs> you know when you need to just rein it in. So uh, thank you all for listening. and. Uh, I hope I was good at explaining. The girls read a long time ago on book, in books, and while girls are still reading books, today they're reading on their iPhones, <laughs> on a shoe chair, and in their room. And I went ahead and put uh, Emily and Jacques in there just to put a throwback, a little, little tongue-in-cheek for this painting. <laughs>